wonderful. Thank you for progress. Thus far, you have helped us. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for the good things that you are doing for us. But that be exalted, Lord, in Jesus' name. As we go into today, please be with us. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. Today, have your way. Make a name for yourself, Daddy, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. King of glory, we pray, Lord God Almighty, that today there will not be any interference in everything that will be used, especially our internet in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Speak to all our facilitators. Help us, Lord. Make a way for us. Make a way for us, Lord. Have your way, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We cover everybody with the blood of Jesus, myself, and even uh, Pastor Emmanuel. King of glory, we thank you. All our technical, everyone, Lord. Lord, glorify yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please, can you just put it in the chat room and say, I am super excited. Hallelujah. We welcome you to the writing, the workshop, workshop 12, which is the writing and producing movie for TV, the power of TV series. And by God's mercy, I just want to introduce my co manager to, today. Uh, you, uh, he will say hello to us. That is Pastor Imane Ojai from Ireland. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much, Ma. I am super excited. You're welcome, everyone. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting, uh, this topic. And we know that God is already in charge. And um, we are looking forward to getting an insight into uh, movie script, right? Um, movie for TV series. Hallelujah. Thank you, man. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right. We are going straight. No waste of time. We're going straight. I'll just introduce our co, um, our facilitators for today. I will introduce them, talk briefly about them, and then we'll just go straight, 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 straight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I, I have with us here Evangelist Ayobami Adeboyega. Amen. Please let's clap, let's clap, let's clap, let's clap, let's clap. Amen. I'm still waiting for our chat. Say I am excited. I'm excited. I'm super excited. Jesus is going to be glorified today. I'm telling you. So I'm waiting, still waiting for us. Hallelujah. You are welcome, Evangelist Ayobami. God bless you, sir, in Jesus' mighty name. With uh, And also today is Evangelist. Damilola Mike Bamiloye, amen. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus. And also, Evangelist Feisha, your angel. God bless you, sir. Jesus, mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. I will just say some brief bio about this one. Thank you. Keep them coming. God bless you. Yeah, I'm super excited. Jesus is going to be glorified. Hallelujah. I'll just say something briefly about them. And then we go straight to teachers of today. I hope you have your papers. Mine is there. Yeah. And my pen ready. I hope you have them ready. Make sure that you get some things written. I don't know if these workshops were go are going to be made available for the general, but that's what I'm just saying. Get your papers ready. Don't come here and just be watching. Okay, let me hear what they say. No, get something written down. You, you will not remain the same in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I will start with Evangelist Damlola Magbamiloye. He is a screenwriter, a producer. Amen. A screenwriter, a producer. He's a uh, DOP actor, among so many other accolades that we can give him. He's the first son of uh, Daddy Mike and Mommy Gloria Bamiloye, president and founder of Mount Zion Faith Ministries International is the director of photography for the Evangelical Army for Mount Zion Faith Ministries International. Is a writer and producer of the popular serial called Abattoir. Amen. He's married to Dr. Emmanuel, Emanuela Mike Bamiloye, and they are blessed with children. Amen. I'll go to Evangelist Ayobami Adeboyega. He is the president of Prodram International, a gospel film production ministry based in Ilorin, uh, Ilorin, Kwara State, Nigeria, since 1996. Wow. The producer of Husband and Wife Syria on YouTube. I'm sure we have been watching that. Director of Program 
Productions. Amen. Hallelujah. He's married to Ola Binkwe Mary Adewoega, and the union is blessed with three awesome and wonderful children. Amen. I'm going to evangelist Felicia your aunt Johnny. He is a screenwriter, a short uh, story writer, an actor, and a songwriter. Woo! Wow. As an actor, he has worked on film and TV shows like Jacob's Cross, Tinsel, and Scandal. His screenwriting credits include What Happened at St. James and I Want Out. His writing uh, have appeared on Peppers, uh, Bakwa Magazine, Litro, Bella Niger, and so on and so forth. And as a recording artist, he recently received, re released two singles, Bemileke and Great Story available on major streaming services. You can see on this bio, to the glory of God, to the glory of God. So as we continue now, we're going to, by God's grace, we will start, uh, once we start like that, it will continue for the three of them, by God's grace, and then uh, we'll come back for question and answer. Please, if you have your questions, Kindly direct it to uh, Pastor Emmanuel Ajayi directly, or you can put it here, or you can wait after so that we can call you. Amen. Hallelujah. So over to you, Technica. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for this privilege. My name is Ayobami Adebuega. I am the producer of Husband and Wife series, a weekly family series that plays on YouTube. Amen. Uh, this morning or anytime you are watching, I'm going to be speaking on uh, how to build capacity for sustainability in producing TV series. How we can build capacity for sustainability uh, because um, I noticed that uh, one of the strongest live wire of any TV series or web series is uh, sustainability. Okay, whether you are into TV series for drama, teaching, music, uh, what have you, or web series, uh, TV series are the ones that we play on TV, web series are the ones that uh, we play on the website or any other VOD platforms. So sustainability is key in the power to keep at it, the power not to give up, the power not to stop. And by God's grace, I have been involved for uh, a little time and I have faced a lot of challenges to quit and uh, this week our episode will be 120 episode of uh, Osman and Wife series consistently but in between this there has been there have been a lot of threats <laughs> to stop due to some circumstances and challenges so I'm going to be sharing with us how we can build capacity to sustain the vision because it is very, very important. Father, give understanding as we discuss together. Let the Spirit of God open our eyes and teach us, O oh God, that which we need to enhance your work in our hands. In Jesus' name, amen. So the first point I'm going to be talking about is the content. That's the message. Yeah. If there is going to be sustainability in our TV series, then the content has to be there. It has to be able to drive the series, the message. What, uh, what are you preaching? What has God given you? What, um, what, what will people miss if they miss your episode or a single episode or an entire series. So it is key for us to labor in the place of prayer, in the place of communion with the Holy Spirit, 
to get the message. I tell you, what we preach is nothing but message. So if message is missing, if the content is not there, it won't worth it. You can spend all the millions in the world, in Naira, in dollars, if the message is not there. Because you see, when you say some, somebody is beautiful, somebody is handsome, somebody is wearing a nice dress, and somebody is properly, you know, made up, it is because that person has life. Somebody that is dead, that is lifeless, cannot do makeup, cannot have a good hairstyle, cannot wear a nice dress. So if there is no life, there is nothing to package. So if there is no message in whatever content you are bringing out, regardless of the quality of you know, technical know-how, it's not going to worth it, at least in this kingdom. Because the devil will just, you know, useless all the things you have put together. If you have not received a word to preach, either in drama or in film. So, it requires spiritual preparation to always be ahead of your audience in the message that you preach. Let them look up to what God will be saying through your production. If they watch it this week, if it's a weekly episode, if they watch it this week, let them be looking forward to, wow, what will God say to me again during the next episode? So you've got to be ahead of your audience. And this can only happen when you are connected to the giver of the message. All right? You have to be connected to him in receiving the message and working on the message. I'm going to talk about that working on the message because there are a lot of us who receive the message but we don't work, we don't labor on the message. We just do it raw as uh, we've been given. How do you work on your content, on your message? The first area is about creativity. Be creative. If God is telling you to do a message on salvation, be creative because you will see other messages that have been told on salvation. Message on marriage. And just be creative. Engage your creativity in your characterization. Be creative. Don't, don't, just, don't just give us a character that will not be interesting. You understand? People just package character in films and then that person will be acting like a robot. There are so many aspects of a man's life that will interest, I mean, will interest your audience. You know, his way of life, his mannerism, all of these things has a way of driving a message. I used to give example of a Baba Abejoye in a movie. Now, people love that character. It's not just because there is message in the film of Abejoye. There is also a characterization that is driving the message, the, the character of the man. He would have just been an, an old man a former abbalist who just got converted. But you know, there were a lot of characterization that came to be, to form the character Abejoye. Yeah? You know, his funny nature, comic nature, the deep words in the Yoruba language, you know, the talkativeness. So all of these things is, is being creative about your script and about the character. And one of the attributes of God that we see in Genesis chapter 1 is creativity. He made everything from nothing. He created. So, and sometimes I look at things around us, the airplanes, the technology, the devices we use, how men have been able to create some of these things to make the world is, I mean, a better place. So we should not just get a message and rush into it. Let's work on our content and then be be creative the lord will help us in the name of the lord jesus christ number two is that you should re research where if god has given you a message do your research when god gave me the message of uh, resolute heart as many people that watch husband and wife series here you know resolute heart we just ended um, that series last week uh resolute heart uh, i was how the message came because there are ways God can give you messages. Don't just cage yourself. Uh, we, we did a, 
a, a, a particular message during the series, and somebody called from one of these foreign countries, and she was like, she needed cancer. Uh, she was ripe for marriage, no one was coming, and then she was desperate. She was now asking that, is it right for her to go and get, you know, IVF done? As a single lady, just get a sperm donor and then just have a baby and carry on. So I had to cancel her. And that is not the will of God. But after that counseling, the, the, the Holy Spirit said to me that I should work on that, uh, that, that particular message. Because there are a lot of people like her all over the places. And then so I, I, I prayerfully, you know, you know write, I wrote down the message. But after writing the, I mean, the message, I, because I am not a medical person, I have to, you know, subject the script for proper research, gave it to a consultant, gynecologist, and then, you know, ask a lot of questions. She too, may refer her, I mean, host to a, another specialist, you know, even to the pronunciation of some of the medical terms. Because this thing, medical people will see it and all. So we don't just say because God has given us a message and then you just do it like that. I tell people that you are limited no matter your area. Even if you are a genius, you still need help in some feet. I was with a friend of mine a few days ago and then his senior colleague was calling him asking a question about you know, a particular thing. And I was like, that, was that not your boss? He said, that's the way we practice our profession. You know, you know, probably you don't have detail about something. You just have somebody, and then that person is going to tell you, this is the way we do it. I just wrote a script, and they're very powerful. And then I gave a brother in the ministry. And the brother just asked me and said, are you sure that uh, an ex-conflict can be, an ex-conflict can be a police officer? Ah, you just don't know me that. Ah, I didn't think of that. I had to call, you know, a policeman, and then he, he told me, no, 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 that is not done. So I had to now go and sit down prayerfully and redirect the narrative of the message. So there are a lot of movies that if they have been well researched, they will have come out better. So please subject it to, to research. Okay? Then number two is faith. I said number one is that you must get a message, the content. Number two is faith. You must build your faith capacity for TV or web series in this kingdom. In this kingdom. Uh, I've, I've done my research in the mainstream. Uh, it's difficult for you to see a series that is playing without sponsors. It's very difficult because how, how, how will you fund it? How will you fund it? So. Uh, we have tried, we have tried to get sponsors, you know, some of them we like, oh, your content is religious and then we don't uh, just support religion. Some of them, the executives may be Christian, but their clients, yeah, it's a secular thing they are doing. So the, some, some of them will ask you to go and repackage it and don't make it religious. Just teach people, don't emphasize the gospel of Christ. And because we can't do that, you have to trust in God absolutely. So you must build your faith capacity. I remember some years ago, so many years now, I, I was engaging my, my father in the Lord, Evangelist, my Bam Loi, after a program in Ilefe. I was asking that, sad, sad, please, sir, I want to ask, how do you do budgets for all of this thing? And he just smiled. He said, he said my brother, budgets can threaten you in this kingdom. <laughs> I am not saying that you should not, you know, count your cost before you venture into anything. And I believe that you don't copy people's faith. You can be challenged and grow your own faith. So that, that charge that day really helped me to begin to grow my faith. And shooting husband and wife series for over two years now, it is not because there is any money on grant, but it's a faith work. So what drives us is faith. By the time we notice that this episode will soon end, we fix date for another one, whether resources is on grant or not, and God has never failed. So for us to, because I've seen so many projects like this packed up because of lack of support. And then if God helps our faith and we begin to build capacity 
uh, in trusting him for resources, God will be raising men gradually to be of support for the work. So it takes faith. Faith. I mean, God may ask you to do so some things before he just opened the windows of heaven unto you. He just wants to put you into some test. Because this work is highly spiritual. And I pray that God will help our faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will not die on the way. The vision in our hands will not die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So faith is a substance that we need majorly, majorly in driving TV series. Because location is huge, you know, the cost of shooting. And I used to tell people that uh, our content are not cheap. When you do a good film and you want to do it every week, every week, it's not a cheap thing. So it takes faith, a reasonable degree of faith. Your faith will not be like a mountain. Or well, if it is little, let it be pure. Absolute trust in God. Not in the money you make online. Not in, but just trust God. God has a way. Or oh, several times we have ventured into location not knowing what to hit the following day. But it's a God will just come through for us and then we will have, in most times, having essays. So it takes faith to venture into this work. Then the third one, because of time I have to rush, is the structure. I tell people, it's a long-term thing. You have to have a structure in place. Structure. Structure such that whether you are there on ground as the visionary or not, the structure is working. By the grace of God, that is the structure we have built for husband and wife series. Uh, before we venture into it, I noticed, I, I, I tried to observe and pen down what are the things that can be uh, challenge or challenges to us. I, and I discovered that one of them is getting dedicated crew, main crew for the work. For instance, if you don't have a dedicated editor who edits your movie solely, uh, because I've had stories of people saying our film has been with editor for more than three months, some close to a year. It has happened to me before, so I knew what I needed to do. So, raise an editor. It started with husband and wife series, okay? And then people were like, oh, uh, he's not the best of editor around, but you see, he has grown, and then he, there's nothing you want him to do now that by the grace of God he can't do. But that was a sacrifice we need to engage, you know, have a structure that will not affect the program. Because if I, I just I, just imagine if we have to be begging one editor who has other people's firm and they are ma mounting pressure on him. And we're also pressurizing him that uh, we are going to upload on Friday. Please, 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 please. You know, it, it will be frustrating. I, and I noticed that this has been the story of so many producers. So there has to be a good structure in place. Build a sustainable structure of a team. A team. I used to have two associate directors, some assistant directors. Now we have about four such that the work has to progress. The enormity of the work is such that m most times, even me myself, I leave the set to attend to other you know, pressing issues. So if we want to sustain this thing, we must delegate, collaborate, raise a structure, raise a team, um, I mean, for the work. And I, and I know that if we do this, it will have a long way to go. It will have a long Because if I have to receive the message, write the message, produce it, direct it, be in charge of searching of location, one will just fall under the stress and die. And people will say, God has taken him home. So wisdom is required. Wisdom is needed. Because the demand is high. In this matter, now people will ask you that 30 minute uh, video is short. You should elongate it. Sometimes I just laugh. You understand? So it, it takes wisdom to build a structure that will help you to carry on in the vision so that you will not just be discouraged. 
if you stress if you stress yourself too much there's there's a tendency that everything will just be blur you won't know what you are doing you will you you will not be in your right senses so wisdom is key wisdom is key all right number four we also need to build capacity to face any challenge that comes our ways build capacity to because challenges are bound to happen even when you are doing feature movies and you are shooting occasionally we know that there are challenges attributed to it in terms of cast location finance resources and all let me give you an example uh when we're shooting res, re, re, yeah it was resolute heart um after season one uh i started to pen down the story for season two uh if you watch that film the story for season two was supposed to be driven majorly by yabo shudendi and after i've concluded the message i now uh reach out i was like okay let me talk to our sister and then she, her number was not going so i called the husband and then i was told that uh, uh, she has relocated abroad wow how do we do this uh, so i have to go and pray you know meditate and ask the holy spirit to guide us so we now have to change the narrative and it came out so powerful it came out better so such thing if you are not ahead in planning maybe uh, the the the, pre, the pre, i mean the current episode is finished that is when you are now doing the rush work to do another one and then you'll be stuck so because we're always planning ahead and then we're building capacity for any challenges that come our way we're able to adjust by the help of the holy spirit and carry on with the story there have been instances where we will use a location and there has to be continuity for that location. And the owner of the house will say, please, you can't use the house again. Because the last time you came, you were here for about five, six days, morning to night. Please, there's no chance again. So there are challenges that we face like that. So we must let, somebody may just travel like it happened to us. You understand? Somebody may not be available. So the, there are challenges attributed to series. If it's a future movie or part one and two, you shot it and that's the end. But something that is in season, after this season, you know, the message is still continuing. So it's a challenge that we must, we must prepare, we must prepare for. One key thing about TV series is that be ahead. Don't stay at the same level your audience are. When they are celebrating a success today, you have gone ahead. You have even finished the next project. You are trusting God for another one. If God takes us to that level when we are ahead, we are, by the time you are confronting the challenges, you know, nobody knows. They don't know. They are just enjoying and getting blessed with the one they are watching. You are facing another challenge. So by the time you are done with those challenges and you are serving them with the spiritual meal or what God has given to you again, then they begin to celebrate and begin to rejoice and get in place. We should never be on the same level with them. So it's not something you rush into. You must plan it, build a structure, and you begin to do it. And then you see, you can do it gradually. You can do it, you know, one step at a time. Don't let people rush you. Move in the pace at which the Holy Ghost is helping you. We started with movies of about three, five minutes. Later, it goes to about 10 minutes. Then now it's 30 minutes every week. So if God allows, it can grow beyond that. But it's not that anybody is rushing us. We are moving according to the pace and the structure God has helped us to, to set. Oh, my time is almost gone. Let me say this finally because I think I have just less than three minutes. It's a story of a man, who, an elderly man, who said that uh, he sent a message to his children to come and meet him, all of them, they should come. And then he was waiting for them, and then about three of them. So one of them was coming in his vehicle, and then he saw his brother on the way. The brother had a flat tire, and then he drove past him because he wanted to get to their father, fathers first, to be the number one person that will arrive 
where the father said they should meet him. And then the father asked about his brother, that where is your brother, where is the other one? And he said, okay, I saw my brother on the way. I think he had a flat tire. I don't know whether he has a spare tire. I just saw him on the road, uh, but I need to be here first. And the father was angry with him, said, my joy is not that you make it here. It's not that you have made it here. My joy is that all of you get here. So you should have waited for your brother, assist him in fixing whatever was wrong with his vehicle and come here together. What is the lesson I have from this story is that God is not calling any one of us. Whether you are doing TV series, you are doing feature movie, you have a 1 billion subscriber, you have a 1,000 subscriber, you have 500. God is not calling everyone, principally or majorly or primarily, to be a star. God is calling us to build the body. He's calling us to build the body. Why am I saying this? For everyone who needs help, for everyone who wants to venture into TV series, or you want to venture into web series, let everyone that has this grace, let everyone that has this platform be of help one to another. Because we are doing it for the sake of our Heavenly Father's kingdom. We are doing it so that all of us, when we get to, we will rejoice together that, oh, we, we did not keep silent when the people of this world were polluting our generation with bad content. We rose, we labor, we collaborated. So as we labor, I will, our labor should not be self-driven. It should be about building the body. All Man Zion alumni, members of Hans Sedram, drama ministers, everywhere around the world. It's a teamwork. And everyone that is having the desire to venture into this TV series, I pray that God will receive, I mean, release the grace unto you in the name of Jesus. And God will help every one of us to keep, I mean, to create platforms so that we can be burden bearers for one another, so that every one of us can be fulfilled in this ministry. Thank you, everyone, for listening. God bless you. Amen. 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 Wow, that's very, very insightful. And uh, I can see that people are already putting what they came from that teamwork, be ahead of the audience, and other things that stood out for you. You can put it on the chat, add the message, do a research, build the faith capacity, build capacity to face challenges that comes with all this, and also, of course, build people, teamwork. Hallelujah. And um, you can put whatever came out, stood out for you. You can put it on the chat. Yes, that's what we want. Hallelujah. And so we'll move straight to the second person that will be um, taking up to today is uh, uh, beloved uh, brother Dami. God bless you. Hello, great people. My name is Damla McBamley from the Mount Zion Film Productions, and I'm here to talk about writing and producing movies for TV. And particularly, we are going to look at the power of a TV series, the power of TV series. Now, um, I'm going to be sharing some of my experiences from Abattoir. This is how Abattoir, I'm going to, what I'm going to be narrating is how Abattoir came to be, how we started writing, how I started writing Abattoir. It's a very interesting story. I was watching this um, series, you know, a very interesting series, and it hooked me from episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four, episode five, episode six. Then it got to a point, probably in episode seven of this series, that it was so intriguing that I felt the emotion and I had to shut it down. I went to God in prayers and I asked the Lord, I said, God, there's no how this will get my attention. You have to give us a movie that will serve as a godly alternative to these secular movies. There has to be a secular or there has to be a godly alternative because these movies, what they do is that Yes, they are intriguing. Yes, they are interesting. But they distract people. They draw people away from God. They draw people's attention away from God. Because you can watch all these series, and at the end of the day, you finish watching it, you feel intrigued, you feel happy at the end of the day, but there is no energy to pray. There is no desire to pray. There is no desire to have a communion. Remember the days of when I was in secondary school, we watched films like 
all this um i don't want to mention some of this series film but watch films from the morning and watch the vigil we after watching the vigil we used to do vigil i don't know the day the next day we end up completely dry and empty empty of power empty of energy empty of inspiration from god because it has taken a lot of our time you know so you see some people watching film i have a friend that time he in fact he will start in the morning watch the movie till like 3 a.m in the middle of the night then sleep like from three to like seven as many wakes up he pissed up again and continues watching at the end of the day he feels completely empty so all his mind everything about his mind will revolve around the movie say for example he's watching a movie like 24 or prison break he will begin to act in a very funny way everything around him will look like is in the world of prison break or is in the world of 24. sometimes we feel like as if he's carrying gone as if somebody is chasing him and ask him what is what is the problem with you who is running after you but no because he has so much soaked himself into the world of that film he starts acting weird he starts acting strange he starts acting as if there's a terrorist coming from somewhere you know one day i was coming from coming to the room and this man stood beside the door holding a fake gun pretending as if i'm a terrorist then he, put, he pointed his finger at my head and like said freeze and, I'm, and i was wondering what is wrong with him and it's because he has been so engrossed in the world of that tv series you know so there's actually power in tv series that's the power to hook the attention of someone and that was what he did to me briefly before i got on my knees and i prayed and asked god i said god these people are doing their assignments but what is my assignments what is the, the challenge for me now is to do my assignment because if this can hook people believers alike that means there are so many unbelievers that have even completely lost it so i had to tell you i said god give me an inspiration and god did you know i i was actually crying at this point in time because i was completely challenged i said god that all power belongs to you all inspiration belongs to you all revelation belongs to you there is need for an alternative we need a godly alternative and i was praying for this and god gave the inspiration abattoir you know so and abattoir came to be we started writing abattoir we finished the first season and after the first season they had the end of the first season of course there was a hook for the second season of course so people wanted to know what the second season is it, it and as God, God was so faithful. He did exactly what we prayed about. It restored the lives of people. A lot of people came, came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We could see through the time comments. A lot of people saying, I gave my life to Jesus watching this movie. I'm, I'm inspired. I'm inspired to pray. In fact, hearing that alone, it's, it's, it's encouraging that people can watch a series and at the end of the day, receive the, 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 the energy to pray, which is doing the direct opposite of what this what this series are doing right now the world series has the assignments to drain you from prayer that's the assignment of a worldly series of a worldly tv series if you're watching a worldly tv series if you're watching five or six episodes you'll be completely drained of power drained of energy to pray you can't you can't you can't go on a retreat without watching the series no but the fact that someone can watch this movie and receive the transformation from the inside to pray, to see the face of God. You know, someone said something after watching Apatua, a particular episode, this person used to be tormented and um, abused by the mother he know, just like the story. But after watching it, he receives the courage to confront the situation, to expose the hidden darkness, to expose the hidden darkness that was tearing him in the spirit that was eating him in the spirit. You know, these are one of the things, a godly series, a series inspired by the Holy Spirit should revive people, should inspire people, should draw people closer to God. You know, and that was what, uh, by the grace of God, Abattoir did, and Abedroye did, and so many other series like that. You know, series like Games, that's what they are doing, Games by uh, Evangelist Victor Lukoju, and so many other series. That is what they do, that's the purpose of everything. You know, we're not just write, writing series for writing's sake. Some people don't even have an understanding of why they're writing series. You think they're just writing series because, ah, Damla Bamle is writing series, uh, BVO is writing series, um, My Bamle is writing series, Femi, Femi Fajos um, Prem is writing series. No, we're not just writing for writing's sake. We are creating godly alternative. The assignment of the devil is to drain everyone of the desire, the zeal to know God, the fellowship, the communion with God. And so he introduces series as a way to hook you so that you continue to watch it. So you, at the end of the day, you won't even have the desire to pray. You know, 
But when you, when we are talking about a series inspired by the Holy Spirit, a series, a TV series inspired by revelation, the agenda, the main purpose of this series must be to do the alternative, to do the opposite, and that is to draw people back to God. To, want, to give people the, the desire to want to know God, desire to want to have a fellowship with God. That's why people watch this series and must begin. Some people watch series, series, series like Abejoye and they begin to speak in tongues. They begin to speak in the spirit. So when somebody sent me a message that after watching Abejoye, he just went all out speaking in the spirit, just talking in the spirit, just engaging the, you know, having the fellowship again, the fellowship that he has lost, it, it was revived after watching that series, you know, so that is the, that's the joy and that's the assignment that God has called us to do, to be set apart, even with our production. Now let's move to the next thing. So, um, amazing things, so many things happened after, you know, Abedjay, because of the intrigue of the story, you know, there are so many, many experiences, a lot of people wanted to know when season two coming out and that initially brought pressure. It brought pressure to me because I really wanted to, I was feeling pressure. I was, I was asking, I said, God, you know, season one was really good. People loved it. But can season two be better? Can season two be better than season one? So that was the pressure that I felt. Then I, 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 of course, every time I feel this pressure, I go back to the presence of God because I believe that God is one that gives inspiration in the first place. Once you believe they are the one that creates this story, then you are limited. You are limited in the impact you can make. You are limited in how the outreach that it can, the outreach of the movie. But once you believe that it is God that gives this revelation, you are just a, a, a tool. You are just a, a, a channel through which this revelation comes to you and blesses lives. Then God can be confident enough to carry the message and spread it however He wants to spread it. So whenever I see this movie making impact. In America, it's making impact in India, in South Africa. You see, it is God that is doing his thing. I say, I'm just a channel. So that is the mindset. A lot of people have taken the place of God when it comes to creating series. So they create this series and it blows. It inspires a lot of people. People are talking about it. And so they begin to feel like, yes, now we're the writer. It's we that are doing this, it's because of our wisdom, the creativity, we do this, we do that. Once you begin to take that place of God, you are limiting the move of God. You know, so because I felt this urge, initially I felt this pressure around Abattoir season one was good. Everybody looked for Abattoir season two. So I started to have a fear, the subtle fear started to come into my spirit. What if it flops? What if it's not as interesting as season one? So I was so scared, I didn't know what to do until I got to a point where I have to relax. The Holy Spirit just told me, see, relax. It is not you doing this thing. It is God doing this thing through you. Once you begin to feel you're doing this thing, you can't make any impact. You begin to put energy. You're going to put your own creativity. You begin to look for creativity. You're going to, some, some people actually look, watch other people's films, and see if they can steal concepts. We are not stealing concepts here. God is the, the Holy Spirit is the one that gives the concept. And because of that, I say, okay, fine. God, you are the one that gives this revelation. I don't want to give this idea. Come and do what you know to do best. So I was relaxed completely. I felt relaxed in the presence of God. Just asking God, I want to just spend time with you. So I locked myself up in the office. I was praying. And God did something that has never happened to me before. I started writing in the morning and I finished the next morning. That's one episode. The whole episode, I started writing in the morning, finished the next morning. And so the speed at which I wish to write, that I used to write the entire season, it was written in, say, a month. Finished the whole season. The speed, the speed, it came with such a speed. It was an overflow of revelation, an outflow of revelation. Overflow of revelation. Why? Because God had taken over. And so, when, in fact, when I'm writing episode one, I don't know what episode two will be, but I'll just continue writing. I'll get to episode two. Anytime I get to the bridge, I end up crossing it. Why? Because God is the one that crosses it for me. He's the one that writes it for me. See, that I've, there is something in writing I call express. When you begin to write, and you just see yourself getting writing 10 pages, 20, 50, 40, 50, 70, 80. And you ask yourself, how did I get here? You don't even know how you got there. That is an amazing experience. And that was what the Holy Spirit did. It took over the writing completely. And I found myself writing an entire season. You know, six episodes of Abattoir. We shot it 
It was amazing. The same thing again after finishing the season, finishing it, um, season, season two. People are craving again for season three. But I have learned that you don't back on your power. Go back to the source of revelation. That is God. Go back to the to the secret room. Stay in His presence. Pray, and He will come. I got to a point in season three. I was even more scared now. Why? Because I wrote this first episode and I didn't even enjoy the writing process. It was looking longer than usual. I said, God, you help me in season two. I was able to write. One episode in 24 hours. Now come, I'm struggling to write one episode in season three. And God told me something. He said, the more you ask, the more I will release. Just keep writing. So I forgot. I didn't even know where the next season will come, what the next episode will be. I just kept writing. Got to a point, I didn't even know what the next scene will be. I just kept writing by faith. As I wrote by faith, God proved himself strong. And I did the entire se- the entire series was fra- was completed. We shot it, released again, we passed for season four. And I know the same God that did season one, season two, season three, we also do season four. But what am I trying to say in all sense is that we have to come to a point where we know that it's not by professionalism. Because professionalism does not break the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. So when your focus is on professionalism, when your focus is on how I'm going to impress people, with my storyline, then you cannot do the actual assignment that the Holy Spirit wants to do. Some of us want to, we are taking the place of the Holy Spirit. Nothing that God himself wants to move, but because we are so much focused on professionalism. I'm not saying professionalism is bad. Look, when it comes to writing, I get completely spiritual in the presence of God to receive the best. When it comes to the field itself, I get spiritual too, but I make sure that we dot our teeth and we cross our, is it dot our teeth across our eyes or cross our teeth? What is it? Cross, uh, our eyes. cross our eyes and dot. dot cross our, cross, <laughs> cross the teeth and dot. Even my orders are confused. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we do what we're supposed to do in the production. Get the right camera, get the right set, get everything. When it comes to the writing, I get completely spiritual. I get to the point where it is me and God. Because this writing, has to bless me first before he blesses the world. If I write a thing and I'm not blessed, then how would he expect me to have the same thing, bless the world? I've written a story before and I was crying. When I got to the end of the scene, I was shedding tears. It made an impact in my life. It left an impression in my heart. So I knew automatically, I didn't need people to tell me that this story, ah, it's a powerful story. I don't need people to tell me that because I know even myself, I was blessed. This, this movie did something in my life before it goes out and started doing something in other people's life. So you, the writer, must have an encounter with God before people out there should have an encounter. God should not the right. You see, when it gets to a point where you finish writing a story, after writing the story, you just give it out and people, you expect that, oh, it should bless people. And you yourself, you're not being blessed. That means the work is not yet done. That means the Holy Spirit has not yet touched your heart. That means you are writing the knowledge you've known before. And everything about God is fresh. We're supposed to come to the presence of God to receive what? Fresh idea, fresh revelation, fresh knowledge. Because this is a spiritual business now. We're talking about TV production, TV series. The world is hooking people. The world is, is like drug. You give someone since episode one, they want to look forward to episode two. You give someone episode two. Before you know it, you give someone 10 episodes of people sitting down watching what we pollute their hearts. But what we are doing now, God is raising us up as alternatives. Now, we're going to be an alternative to this end time. You, your writing must bless you because the Holy Spirit must inspire you. So if it comes if you are receiving knowledge, head knowledge from what the pastor has said, I am using it to bless the world. It won't, it's different. It's not going to make the impact that it's supposed to make. So let's look at what it takes to write and produce movies for TV. What it takes to write and produce movies for TV. Number one, Pray for inspiration and divine creativity. Look, it looks like everything, these two points are in one sentence, but they are two different things. Inspiration and divine creativity. Let's talk about inspiration first. You must get, you must receive the inspiration from God. You must be inspired first. You are not writing based on politics. You see people talking about um, Nigeria, and so you decide to write about Nigeria. That, that means you are writing based on head knowledge. Because if you write based on head knowledge, you will get to the heads of people. But if you write based from the spirit, you will eat the spirit of people. And what makes the true transformation is messages that hit the spirit of people. So you must be truly inspired. You know, I said earlier that you cannot just 
um, that is not professionalism that breaks the joke is the anointing that breaks the joke. And so I've written this, I've written some scripts before recently that after writing that script, I myself I started shedding tears. I mean, in the last episode of Enoch, after writing the last episode, the last scene, I mean the last in the last one of the recent movies of Mosiah, Enoch, the movie. And after writing the last scene of that film, I myself I burst into tears and I was shedding tears and I was praying to God because it did something in my life. That was deep inspiration from the Holy Spirit. You know, in 30 pieces, you know, 30 pieces about the police officer who was accused wrongly and all that. But something inspired that movie. Something inspired that movie. And I'm going to explain, I'm explaining it, I'm going to explain it now. Now, what happened was this. That this police officer who stays down our area. Now, this police officer, what he does is that he has several placards. And on, that, on these placards, he puts different posts. He, puts, um, he preaches through these placards. He put them by the side of the road, and he does his normal traffic duty on the road. So he puts, maybe, um, Jesus loves you, give that to Jesus, no Jesus, no peace, and he puts them on each placard so that as you are driving, you will see those messages. You will see them, and you will give, you, in fact, it, those placards have ministered to so many people. So he doesn't say a word, but the placards are preaching already by the side of the road. You know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So many inspirations. He has several of those placards. You know, and that is how he ministers. So he's a police with a difference. He's a, he's a police evangelist. He calls himself the police evangelist. And that is what he's doing. Everybody knows him for that. He has been fired before. He has been um, suspended before because of that. And he told them that it's best, it prefers to be suspended than for people, for him not to do the work that God has commissioned him to do. And because of that, after a while, they had to call him back. The person they suspended, they called him back. And when they called him back because he was doing an amazing job, you know, controlling traffic and all that, he went all out again with the same <laughs> um, placard, preaching the gospel with the placard. So one day, my wife was driving, and I saw him. I was so inspired by this man. I brought out, we brought out some funds. We packaged this in the white envelope. We called him and said, sir, God bless you for making a difference. Thank you for standing for Christ. Can we be a blessing? We just, want, we just want to bless you with this little money. So he joyfully, he received the money. He appreciated us. I said, thank you very much. God bless you. And that's how he went. As I was, I was, I was driving away after giving him that, you know, token. As I was driving off, immediately the Holy Spirit hit me with inspiration. And write a story from this experience. And that was how this inspiration for 30 pieces was birth. So I was just writing it. And... We saw the hand of God. The movie was produced, and of course, a lot of people were blessed. But you know that that man did not even know that his life is a blessing to millions of people. He won't know now. I'm sure I'm going to watch that film. But if you watch the film, you know that 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 film was inspired from the Holy Spirit used his life as a source of inspiration for that movie. You know, so you really don't know actually how many people are inspiring for standing for Christ. He is doing his own thing alone, but that act. It's going to inspire millions of people through a movie. Of course, they'll see the movie on YouTube. Millions of people will see the movie on other platforms. But that man will know that what he's doing is a seed that is blessing generations, thousands of people. That is why inspiration is key. Inspiration is key. You need to make sure that our inspiration is from the Holy Spirit. We receive and we dig deep to receive inspiration from the Holy Spirit. That is how we can be truly blessed. I said it earlier before, that your message must bless you before it blesses people out there. The only way it won't bless you is when you're writing for head knowledge. Some people, we know all the spiritual books, we know all the spiritual gifts, we know everything that the Bible has to say. And so when it comes to writing Christian film, you can easily write Christian film and give. But it's one thing to just write Christian film for writing sake. And I think for that message to be remarked to you and bless you and impact you. Daddy Mike wrote a story one time, he wrote a movie, Storms of Life. And after I finished writing that movie, God corrected that and said, that's the story is for you. Look at this story and look at the family of this man. You don't have time for your family. And that changed something in Daddy Mike. It was inspired by that movie. It touched him. The movie blessed him. And when that movie was out, it blessed thousands of people out there too. See, anybody can write a film. Anybody can write a Christian film and add Jesus to it. Anybody can put Jesus in a film. But when God is the one driving the story, when God is the one driving the story, the difference is there. The difference is clear. It makes more impact. So this, you must receive the inspiration. That's one thing. Then divine creativity. Divine creativity is how you interpret the inspiration that the Holy Spirit gives you. When I'm writing a scene, it gets to a point where I ask myself, 
this scene I'm writing, have I seen it before? If, I'm, if I've seen this scene in a movie before, I'm not going to replicate it. That's not creativity. Creativity is doing something in a way that has not been done before. So I have to ask myself several times, how can I replicate this scene in a different way that I've not seen before? And this is the question I ask the Holy Spirit. How can you help me to do this? How can you help me to do this? And that is what, you know, connects the audience. People see it and say, wow, this is, we've seen this before, but we've not seen this before. This is different, but it's creative. You know, because there's nothing new under the sun, yes, but still, it's presented differently. Our presentation matters a lot. How we hand over or write our scripts, our stories, it must be done with elements of divine creativity. And notice I say something, divine creativity, not just creativity. When the hand of God is in a creative work, in a creative piece, that is where the divine creativity comes to be. So, inspiration, divine creativity. Next point, try as much as possible. And we are looking at how to write TV series, how to make TV series. It, it's suicidal, it's dangerous. people on set and say let us shoot 10 episodes in uh, one week let's shoot 10 episodes in two weeks at the end of the day you will end up exhausting yourself and you end up exhausting your crew and you will not be able to put your best in each episode for me the mindset i i my my, my approach my mindset for abattoir was each episode must carry fire each episode must carry intentionality it must be intentional it must be well done each episode so that when i'm watching each episode as if i'm watching a film move to the next episode as if i'm watching a film it's as if i'm watching a full length film on the zone that's why you see sometimes you see one hour film one hour episode of abattoir or 40 minutes episode of abattoir sometimes all we shoot is just two episodes in two weeks or in 10 days and that's it we wait again come back again continue shooting wait again we we'll shoot another two episodes we will go back come back again shoot another episode because i know that if we clash six episodes into one film shoot everyone will be exhausted and at the end of the day you will not be able to achieve the 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 quality you want to achieve the beauty you want to achieve the the details you want to put into each work you will not be able to do it. it's going to be a rush 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 work it's going to be a matter of Wide, close, close. Wide, close, close. Wide, close, close. Wide, you can you can actually put your best in in, in one episode and, and and edit it well. Put your best in another episode. That I believe is the best approach. You know, so don't clash ten episodes into one location or don't try and do as many you want to do as much just because you don't want to um, you want to you want to cover time. So you want to bring in as much do as much as you want to do. No, take your time to do it as. The Holy Spirit, as the Lord helps you to do it, is going to help us. You know, don't try and rush the work. Don't try and rush the work. Because my father always tell me something. This film project we are doing is a very dicey thing. Whatever you do now, 10 years from now, people will still come back and watch it. So if you do rubbish now, and you produce rubbish, 10 years from now, they will come back and say, let's watch this person's film. And it's still going to be rubbish. Ignition was shot how many years ago? I think seven years ago, there about. Almost going to turn now. Now, if we put, if we play Ignition movie now, one day, and the crew, and my guys, my team, we are together. We're watching all the old films we've done. Just said to just, I think my Ignition's office. So we're just going through all those old films, and we discover something that the quality has been consistent. So ten years from now. We are watching it, just keep watching the same quality. So if we decided then, because of pressure, to just do anything anyhow, because usually in film shoots, we are motivated by pressure instead of inspiration. We are motivated by, let's go do something, let's rush it, let's go do something. If you decide to rush it, and you rush and shoot for anyhow, 10 years from now, when you are going back, when God has blessed and you have increased, you are going back to your work, you will shake your head for yourself that, what have we done? Why are, why are we even rushing in the first place? So if you look at the time that God is a gospel film, this is the word of God we are acting, and the word of God is forever. So 20 years from now, that word is still forever. So 20 years from now, it's going to do you good if you could invest in the work you have done 20 years before. So that when 20 years from now come, you'll be able to watch it, you'll feel inspired that, wow, this work is still intact. The quality is still there. Like when I and the team were watching this, we were in, we were, in fact, we were impressed. We say, wow, God has helped us. The quality is still there. 
We didn't know much then. If I right now, we know better. But then we were pursuing excellence in our little way. Excellence is not in money. Hope you know. It's not in spending millions of naira. Excellence is just being details to do the right thing. You don't have to bring in the best camera or the best lighting, but just the details to do the right thing. You know, some of us, we are tempted because of the pressure not to do the right thing. We know this thing you are doing is wrong. We are shooting the wrong shots. But that's, let's wait for 10 minutes to get it right. We can't do it. Why? Because of the pressure. And I understand the pressure that comes with location, but it's really worth sacrificing the longevity of the message for. So I think it's very, very important. If it's possible, take your time. Don't clash everything in one sitting. So I'm going to rush my point because of my time. I'm going to rush my points now. So you don't have to write a TV series, TV serial. You can work on a short on short movies or even skits. Work on your strength and grow. It doesn't have to be a TV series. Not everybody can do TV series. Or not, 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 not everybody can work on episodic movies, you know. If, it's, if, your, if your strength is feature film, two hours, then work on that. If your strength is short film, work on that. Then grow by time. The, the time will come that you will find yourself growing from short film to feature film, from feature film to series, you know. Some people have not produced any film before and they want to start with series. It is suicidal. It is dangerous. You will find yourself stressing yourself and you won't achieve much. Start with what you can start with, then grow. Next point is, what determines the longevity of a story is the depth and the strength of the conflict. You can ask me, I know some people are asking me that, what, how, how are you able to make um, the movie so long? Episode one, two, three, four, about 12, for, uh, about Joey, for example. About Joey, four episodes, and it keeps going on and on and on like that. It's because of the depth and the the quality and the depth of the conflict for each of the season. Notice something that sometimes each season comes with a different story entirely, but there is conflict that, see, conflict drives the story. Once, a, once conflict finishes in a particular story, that's the end of the film. Once the conflict is over in a particular story, that's the end of the film. So you notice that even when the conflict is resolved in season, Two of Abedjoye, for example, when everybody's happy and everybody hugs themselves in season three, that happiness will transform to something else. At the beginning of season three, that's the beginning of another conflict because it's conflict that drives the story. So what keeps the story going? If you look at it critically, it's because there is conflict, conflict between the protagonist and the antagonist, two opposite forces, the good and the bad. The people on the side of the good and the people on the side of the bad, they come together, they clash. You know, and it doesn't have to be the same conflicts driving season one that we drive season two. Season one can have entirely different conflict from season two. That's why you see Abedjoy in season one, the people, the conflict in Abedjoy season one is very much conflict in Abedjoy season two. It's as if the, the writer has introduced new antagonists, new antagonists that we fuel or that we ignite conflict again in the life of Abedjoy, who happens to be our protagonist. And the conflict in season two is very much conflict season three. So the conflict keeps changing. But the characters, the protagonists, for example, the protagonists are the same. Even the antagonists, they change. The antagonists are changing because the antagonists are the ones that are bringing the conflict. So they keep changing per season. They keep changing. But the protagonist, who happens to be Abedjoye, still remains the same. You understand what I'm saying? So each season comes with different conflicts. And each conflict is rich, is deep. That is what determines the longevity of a story. So as it is now, God can make Abedjoye to get to, we can celebrate 10th year of an anniversary, 10th year anniversary of Abedjoye. Abedjoye can be 10 years old, we can't say. God can do it, you know. So, but the, what is driving it is um, the conflict. Now, let, let, me, let me try and rush because of time. Um, then, uh, have a structure for every season. A structure is having um, understanding your protagonist, understanding the antagonist, understanding the what the, the the goal of the protagonist, the, the 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 obstacles that the antagonists are bringing. When you have a structure for every season, it helps to keep the story going. Number six, and the last one I'll be talking about is it is very interesting, very good when you have a cliffhanger for every episode and also for the last episode of a season. For example, in, in um. Abattoir. I remember for each in Abattoir season three, one of the things that the beautiful thing that the Lord did for us in Abattoir season three was that almost every episode ends with a cliffhanger. So people at the end of the episode they want to know what will happen in the next episode. So they have to wait for a whole 
week, somebody wrote me one time and said, it's as if they are going to come to your house and are going to riot and scatter everywhere until you release the entire season for us. Why? Because every episode, the end of every episode comes with a cliffhanger. They want to keep, they want to know what's going to happen in season three. In, in season, in episode one of season three, Abattoir was when um, Frola received the, the Holy Ghost. She received the Holy Ghost. What's going to happen next? Is she going to start scatching everywhere? We don't know what's going to happen. In episode two of uh, Abattoir was when Matthias encountered the courtist and he said, stand up, and they stood up. What is going to happen next? Episode three, it does the deep cliff anger. Then the final episode of season three was when Sonya, it was the final episode, but you know, we left something for people to look forward to for season four. Sonya um, woke up from his um, a coma. Now he has stroke. The um, daddy, are threatening the police officer's child that's going to do something. So those are cliffhangers that leads to season four. Now season four, now I'm not even starting writing season four, but we are having an idea of how the direction the story will take. So cliffhangers are very very good. It helps to it helps to hook the audience and keep them engaged. With these few points of mine, I hope you've been blessed and I hope you've gained one or two things about story structures, about writing um, stories for TV. Thank you very much. God bless you. My goodness. Oh, uh, with this brief one, one or two things. I don't know how many things you've written. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Right from the beginning. I don't think my notes are full. Can you please write some things down? God bless you, sir. Evangelist Damilola. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Yes, yes. In fact, I don't even know where to start. But you know what? So that we don't waste time. We are going straight. We are calling upon uh, our evangelist, Feyi Shayo and Jory. God bless you, evangelist Damdola. We welcome evangelist Feyi Shayo and Jory. Over to you, sir. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, sir. You can unmute, sir. Unmute yourself, sir. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here today. Um, the earlier speakers they have made my, made my work easier because they've covered so much about the power of uh, uh, the power of TV, TV series. Now, internally, uh, let me just tell you about what I know about power TV. Uh, most of these TV productions that uh, Dan Lola talked about earlier, uh, most of the productions, they have an agenda. They have, they have a purpose. They want to, like they, they have something that they are trying to achieve in terms of putting people in terms of, uh, we all know what they're trying to do. And so we as believers also, especially we've been in the marketplace, we've been in the, in the industry, also we have our agenda. The Bible talks about we are the salt of the earth. So we see uh, in the secular film industry, much of that is water, polluting water, achieving all kinds of satanic agenda in the salt way. But we are believers, we as believers, we have been uh, given the responsibility of being salt. Bible says you are the salt of the earth. So we are affecting, impacting not just our culture, but also the societal or culture general, such that the pollution in the world, so that the world will not spoil completely. So that is what we are doing. The TV series is so bad that for most TV series, once the theme music starts, in fact, most of us we know the theme music of our popular TV series. Like when I was growing up, Agarana was a popular TV soap of that time, TV series. Uh, when you just start, Agara, don't you Agara, and those two, Angel and that uh, uh, devil uh, image while uh, like dwelling with the sword, you know that wow, something powerful is about to happen today. So that is the power of TV series. So TV series is uh, a bigger storytelling opportunity than the film. It's a bigger storytelling opportunity than the film. So. Uh, when we look at the TV series as like, like, like a Bible, when we look at it like a Bible, 
it's, uh, the film is like maybe a small part of it. Bible of the Prodigal Son, for example. Let's say that's a film. So the film, the, the thing is, has uh, a bigger storytelling opportunity, have larger cast of characters. Um, we have so many stories happening. We have multiple characters. And then the general idea, there's a general idea for the TV series, even though there might be changing uh, between season spots. The general idea for us as believers being in the, uh, in the TV series is redemption. When we look at the Bible, the central idea of the Bible is redemption. So for every TV series that a believer makes, it actually mirrors the Bible. Every TV series that a believer makes mirrors the Bible or is supposed to mirror so we have multiple characters, we have multiple story arcs, and then that just so many storytelling opportunities. Now, when we look at the Bible, in the book of Luke chapter 3, verse 10, Luke chapter 3, verse 10, verse 12, and the, verse 14, we see different categories of people coming to join the Bible and say, what shall we do? They said, what shall we do? In verse 10, it was uh, the crowd. What shall we do? And then he told them practically what they're supposed to do. In verse 12, it was the tax collectors. And then he told them, uh, don't collect much more than you are, you are asked to charge and all that. And then for soldiers, in verse 14. What I'm trying to drive at is that when we look at um, a TV series, it actually gives us the opportunity that we have not really explored as we should as believers to portray characters in their different field who have come to Christ. What are the challenges they face as they try to, be, as they try to uh, express the faith? Now, for example, now imagine if you write a TV series about a believer who is in the legal profession. Now think about that, a believer who is in the legal profession and you develop that and you write that. That would be so, so much impactful. Now imagine if you write about a believer who is in the Nigerian army, who we say we have budget uh, constraints and all that, but imagine if you are able to do that, a believer who is a soldier. Now in the mainstream uh, film industry, they talk about character Bible. I will still go into that, but the Bible that we have as a believer is actually the number one storytelling uh, story inspiration that we can use. The number one storytelling inspiration that we can use. Now imagine this, uh, this civil servant who is the chief of staff and he works with this dictator, a country's leader who is a dictator, who has a terrible wife and whose wife has an assassination team. Now, that story is from the Bible, but you don't know because of the way that I have told it. Now, that's from the book of First Story, uh, sorry, First Kings chapter 18. We have Obadiah, who was actually the chief of staff to King Ahab, and Jezebel, who masterminded the, the killing of Naboth for his vine vineyard, now, that is a storytelling opportunity, for example. That kind of character, we have not been seeing it on film. We have not been seeing it on TV. Now, imagine a character like David, who, is, uh, who started as a shepherd boy, and then he became a soldier, and then he became a king. Look at all his up, ups and downs. Look at his act as a character. Now, we have not explored something like that. Now, when we look at the fall of David, when he fell, on the matter of Bathsheba, Bathsheba, Bathsheba rather, sorry, Bathsheba. We saw that David did not, it's not that David was a sincere or that he was a fake, but he fell. But when, um, when Nathan now went to uh, confront him, we saw that he repented. Now look at the act of that character. Now, that, that, that can inspire you in creating your characters. Look at the character of Judas. He was with the Lord Jesus Christ, he was following him about. But when we are thinking about the character of Judas, 
his story will be a tragic a tragedy because it was not redeemed. But as the first that we want to focus more on the story of redemption. So I'm talking about inspiration, getting your inspiration from the Bible. Now, the scale of the story that you are trying to write will determine whether you will have a writer's room or not. Now, if you are going to write a story that has the scale of the Bible, for example, you will need the writer's room because there are so many characters that tells that redemption story. But now, if you are trying to write a story that seems like that story of Obadiah who was working in the palace of Ea, or the Christian girl that I said is, a, is in the legal profession, I was in a law firm, you may not need to have a writer's room. You may write that alone because it is simple. But if you are going to write a story that has a big scale, it's always better for you to have a team of writers you bounce off ideas amongst each other and you collaborate and then you have in-depth characterization. Now, collaboration is key. Collaboration is key. I've talked about a Bible, the Bible being a very, very rich place where you can source because the Bible talks about God and then it tells so much more about man. That is why the Bible is the inspired word of God, is the word of God because it talks about God and it reveals man as we are. Apart from grace, we are very, very terrible people. So now let me now go to the character Bible. Now, the character Bible that we use as writers is supposed to tell about physical attributes of characters, personality of characters, their desires, and their motivations. Now, to have a character Bible is important if you are not, um, if you are not the only one writing the TV series. The character Bible is important so that if any writer joins the writer's room, then it will be able to continue where you left off, there will be a continuity. There will be a continuity there. Then you'll be able to reference the character Bible for consistency of physical attributes, consistency of personality, even the actor himself will be helped by the character Bible. The actor himself will be helped by the character Bible. Now, TV series are divided to episodes and then seasons. And then, and then seasons. Now, the duration of each episode depends on what you're trying to achieve. Whether you want a five minute episode, whether 10 minutes, or you want 15 minutes, or 20 minutes. So it depends on what you are trying to achieve. It depends on what you are trying to achieve. So, like Brother Milola said, for each episode, I would rather you have a cliff anger such that at the end of the episode, the, the, the audience are looking. At the, at the end of one episode, the audience are looking forward to the next episode. The audience are looking forward to the next episode. Now, I talked about the Bible being a very, very important tool when you are uh, when you are reveal, when you are writing a Christian uh, story. Why did I say that? It becomes when you use the Bible that reveals man. You understand you understand man both the saved and the unsafe, there is a thinking, there is a spirit backing man, that man, whether he's or is unsafe. Now, for the for believers, we have the Holy Spirit that helps us to overcome our natural uh, limits. But also, for young believers, there is a spirit, whether the spirit of the world, the spirit of the devil that is driving them. So when, when you have grounded characters, it becomes easier for you to deal intentionally per episode or per season with the problems that believers face. They will be able to relate with your character. So they will be able to learn from the character. Now, let me go to the Bible and look at the character like Samson. The character like Samson. Now imagine a man of God who started a ministry, but he was as careless as Samson. There are so many indications, so many all the time that he, he should have repented, but he didn't repent. Uh, there was a time that he went to marry one lady that is not supposed to marry, and then they didn't give him that woman and all that. And then there was now the time of Delilah, and there were so many things of the time that he deceived Delilah. That kind of characters, that kind of characters as believers, even in this world now, 
people that God has been telling them do something, do something, and they just refused to do it. And then something that kind of is an example for other believers. Because when you look at the Samson's act as a character in the Bible, we saw that eventually he was saved, but not the kind of way that you, you or I will want to be saved in that way, because at the end of the day, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, he was lifted, listed as one of the examples of faith, but it didn't end as I would want to end or as you would want to end, considering the fact that he fell into sin and they plucked his eyes out and then until he, uh, until he now had to call upon God and did the final act of showing God's strength. Now, that's an interesting character. So, as believers, we need diversity of characters and we need to research on every of our characters to be able to present something rich, something multidimensional, brother. I think we got, you talked about doing your research very well. Uh, most of the time, there's a tendency for, tendency for us writers to be lazy. We don't do our research or we assume a lot. But we have to research on this character so that it will be multidimensional. They will not just be, they will not just be, uh, I don't know, they will, they will not be too simple. Because if the characters are well developed in the script, now one thing I didn't mention earlier is that the, the TV series is a writer's medium. The film is a director's medium, but the TV series is dialogue and conflict driven. So it's much more of a writer's medium. A writer's medium. So if the characters are well developed in the script, it helps the actors and it impacts the audience. How does the actors, if the character is well developed, you, you, you present an actor, the characters, or maybe when you're directing, you tell the, the, the actor the motivation, the personality, and why this person acts the way the person acts. And then uh, the actor will be able to interpret his role better. He'll be able to interpret his role, role better. And also the audience, they will be impacted because when you write a well-rounded character, like a Samson kind of character, if you write it in the story, the biblical Samson, and then a Christian that the Holy Spirit has been telling this brother, this thing, this this thing that you are flirting with, it will destroy you. Destroy you. Now, if you have the Samson kind of character in the film, and that kind of guy is watching, you will see, you will be impacted. You will be impacted because he's well-rounded. He's a man of God. He has the Holy Spirit. He has the call of God upon his life, but he just happens to love the world a little also, which led to his destruction. But until God allowed him to be witch, he will not be like that kind of character in Jesus' name. So, uh, what else do I talk about? <laughs> Let me talk about characterization. What is in the character Bible is actually characterization. Because every character is different. Every character is supposed to be different, just as every, every human being is different. So characterization is every observable trait that you see in the character. Every observable trait. When you look at it, the character, for example, like when you look at the character, let's say you walk in a bank, it's a gentleman, he likes the English Premier League, um, he likes peanut butter, he has a pet, maybe he has a cat, uh, he wakes up, he starts the morning by reading his Bible, he eats lime and all that. One of the things he eats so much is lime. Now look at that kind of character, characterization, uh, uh, that kind of character in terms of characterization. Now that kind of person, when you are now writing him, and you want to place him in conflict. You remember I said he hates lying. Now he confronts an extremist along the way, maybe he's traveling somewhere, and then an extremist along the way now meets him and said, oh yeah, believers, come to this side. And then you know he cannot lie. And then the person puts a knife on his neck and said, are you a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ? And you know he doesn't, he, can, he cannot lie. <laughs> he cannot lie. Now, his character is being tested. His character is being tested by that conflict. Just to differentiate between characterization and character. character. Characterization is about what people can observe. How the character is 
just by mere looking at it. Now the true character is tested by conflicts. For a TV series, it will be a series of conflicts that continues to intensify, that continue because if the conflict is smaller in this episode, it has to be bigger in the next. Now, this character that I said, he works in a bank and all that, and he's on a journey, he's a believer, he eats lying, and then they put a knife on his neck. Now, we have to be a cliff islander for the next episode. They put a, a cut last year, say, are you a believer or not? And then you see next on, on that show. That will help. That's, that's a perfect cliff anger because all these events, they reveal the true character. Now, look at the character of Peter in the Bible. He's following the man of God. He's following Jesus Christ and all that. And the Lord Jesus Christ told him, you will deny me. And he said, never, never. Lie, lie. I can never do that. And then <laughs> at that era, that conflict of meeting that girl that said, you are one of them. You are one of them. And it revealed Peter to himself that he is not, he's not someone that he, you can't be self-confident. And that is the of all of us as, as human beings. That's why I always refer back to the Bible because me personally, most of the characters that I that I use for stories, I draw them from the Bible because the Bible reveals man. The Bible says the art is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Apart from grace, every human being in this world, apart from the grace of God, we are terrible, terrible people. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, when you put, when you have that knowledge, it will help you to create realistic characters and then you, it will help you to develop relatable characters whose journey mirrors our experience and tells the story. Don't forget that every journey, I said every Christian story, storytelling mirrors the Bible and every character is supposed to mirror the human being because that is what that will all create the conceptual relevance. There's something called concept, conceptual relevance as in the relevance of the concept. And then there's the emotional relevance. What will make us to relate with this person? What will make us to relate with the person? Now look at, imagine the character that has maybe uh, nobody gets married in their lineage. And every man that tries to get married to, to, to a lady in that family dies. And then, now that's a conflict. Now a brother in church who doesn't appear to be very spiritual now comes to propose to this sister. Now this sister is beating this brother that ah, this brother will die. You. And then this brother is confident, but maybe in the characterization, it doesn't look like, because we human beings, we relate with other human beings based on perception. Maybe it looks like one of those unserious brothers in church and so this sister is pitying this brother by not accepting the proposal. But this brother who doesn't look so spiritual has the conviction of the Holy Spirit that this sister is my wife. Now that now think about that conflict. So I'm trying to, I don't know how many times I've done it, I've, I've said again, how to create relatable character by characterization and then character who characters who are reviewed because the character of the person is revealed via conflict. And so you have to place your events in strategic places. It has to be a deliberate, it has to be a deliberate plotting. You have to be deliberate about it. Brother, um, brother Adam and Brother Adigo has talked about how to be deliberate, how not how to develop, sit down and work on what God has given you. God has inspired you. You have to work on it very well. And also one thing that is very important as Christian filmmakers in working on our craft as writers is that if you look at the way the world is now, uh, Nigerian filmmakers, for example, they are collaborating with Netflix and all that. I foresee a time that we will be able to collaborate with production companies like Pure Flix, that's David A. R. White, who does uh, Christian movies in the United States of America. I'm looking forward to that time when Christian filmmakers, because much more than the world, we have a universal message that the world needs. And if we look at the Bible, look at the different characters, look at Abraham. Abraham is not like Moses. Moses is not like David. Joshua is not like, no character is alike. Joseph, look at the conflicts that they make. That is to tell you that in every field, believers are in that field doing the will of God. 
Now, doing the will of God in your field means you are in conflict with the world, as in the case of Daniel, for example, who was in government. Now, I want to see you write a character that is in the, the mainstream political parties and is doing the will of God. Now, how do you do the will of God in a world that is corrupt and it's Christ? Now, that is conflict. So uh, I, I want to encourage us that we need to we need to work hard. We need to work harder. I know we have been working hard, but we need to work harder in expressing Christ and showing the world that Christ is to be glorified through our lives. And are we being salt and we being light wherever we are. Believers, they are in the army, they are in the Nigerian army, they are in the army anywhere. Let me not say Nigerian army. They are in the film industry. They are believers that God has given the grace of being famous. How did that believer handle fame? Now, these are conflicts that we need to, to work on that will help us. Now, the script is also is very, very important because it is the roadmap that the cast and the crew will work on. The script is very important because it will determine the locations, it will determine the sets, and it will determine the capacity and the availability of actors. Now, the actor that is the main cast, like Abedjoye, for example, we know that by the grace of God, God has spared that his life, is in, more, in, in all the seasons. Now, you don't want to cast an actor who is not so much available in that very, very strategic role. That very, very important role. I was told that I have uh, one minute left. I will want, not want to overshoot my time. I thank Brother Damilola, my family, and Brother Adigwe. They have spoken extensively on a lot more of some of the things that I wanted to mention. But I thank God that God has been able to use the three of us today to bless you. So I uh, see you doing exploits for the Lord in the film industry. I want to see you doing exploits for the Lord in the film industry. The Lord will help you. The Lord will give you the ability and the capacity that you need. The Lord will enable you and inspire you. Jesus. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Wow, wow. Please, a round of applause to all our facilitators. They are fantastic. All of them. Are... Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. What are you <laughs> Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, guys. What an in-depth, what an in-depth um, workshop. The, I mean, I like the way that um, when I was Shia came in and talked about the character and the writing itself. I, I bless God with light. So the way he picks the Bible character and then you reflect, you reflect the, the present day and society, how you can use it. It's amazing. Thank you so much, sir. We will celebrate grace. Thank you so much. Uh, in time, uh, we wanted to go into question and answer, but because of our time, because we are we are working, we are we are under authority as well. Uh, we don't want to shoot our time, but of course, um, also I I want to appreciate uh, those that are putting things on on the on the chat room. Uh, Pastor Ola, thank you so much. Pastor Bible Daily, uh, those things are really uh, encouraging as well because you're getting the point and you're putting it there. We want to appreciate everyone that connects today. If you want to wish, um, we want to take, maybe we can just take one question if possible because uh, we, are, we are meant to finish by 12 30 to be, to be kindly. If someone will ask one, just one question, we can only have room for just one before we round up. If you, if you want to ask a question, you can just raise your hand and uh, our facilitators are here. They're all here to answer your question. Okay. I believe that we are, we are all taking notes. My notes are full as well. So yes, I believe we all understand. And um, yes, we'll be, we'll be running up shortly. And we want to appreciate everyone that connected here. Most especially, we want to thank all our facilitators for those in-depth teaching. And um, we have gained, gained an insight and we believe that um, as we go from here, we will do greater exploits for the Lord. Um, we want to appreciate all the all the technical team um, working behind the scenes to make this possible. And uh, our daddy and mommy, uh, uh, evangelist Mike Bamloe and uh, Gloria Bamloe for this opportunity. Thank you everyone for connecting. We are going, we, you know, the next thing we're going to go for this uh, sc uh, movie screening. So, the links will be will be sent to us in, in the in the forum. I want to call on the 
my co-host. Yes, Ma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh God, this is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, I wouldn't want to repeat what you have said. I just want to say thank you, God, for all our facilitators. May your wealth of knowledge not run dry in Jesus' mighty. God will continue to increase you. And by God's grace, you begin to see us putting to practice what you have taught us today. And God of heaven, the, his kingdom will, be, will increase as a result in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Shall we briefly just pray? Father, we thank you so much. We are so grateful. Thank you for the knowledge of today. Thank you because, in fact, no question because you actually taught us through all our facilitators. We ask, Lord, that in increase, you will increase them. In blessing, Amen. you will bless them. Father Almighty, Lord, that you will increase them on all sides, enlarge their course, and increase their anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. As we move forward, please be with us. Thank you, Lord God, for our technical. Thank you for everybody behind the scene. Thank you, Lord God, even for how you have used us today. Glory and honor be unto your name. Thank you for uh, uh, myself and even uh, Pastor Emmanuel. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory be to your name, ancient of days. Lord God Almighty, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless you. you. God See bless you. you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Evangelist and Johnny. God bless you. We appreciate you, sir. Amen. Bye, Amen. everybody. See you at the theater. See you at the theater. Amen. Hallelujah.